A new report says there needs to be a radical rethink about how we provide palliative care to people with life-limiting illnesses. Academics at Nottingham University say an ageing population means more of us will need hospice care as we get older. They also say more funding is needed if people are to get high-quality care towards the end of their life. Phil Brewster reports. For almost 40 years, the Nottinghamshire Hospice has provided care, dignity and choice to people with terminal and life-limiting illnesses. Sometimes that's nursing care in the home. Other times it's day therapy, providing patients and their families with companionship and emotional support at a difficult time. When patients first arrive, they're oft, often really anxious. They don't quite know what they're coming into. Um, they're quite scared. They can think it's going to be a really gloomy place. And actually, after a few hours here, they realise it's quite a happy place. Um, a place where people are willing to talk to them, uh, where they're not lonely, where they're not isolated. But a, a bit everybody's in the same boat and we can help each other. Until now, palliative care has largely focused on providing short-term end-of-life care to patients. But a new report suggests that needs to change. Research by the University of Nottingham says not only will we live longer as a society, many of us will do so while suffering from long-term health conditions such as heart disease, diabetes and dementia. The report's author says that requires a radical rethink of how we fund palliative care and when we start to provide it. Older people particularly uh, may benefit from palliative care much earlier on in the illness trajectory, kind of upstream rather than downstream. And that perhaps takes a change in focus clinically, and it certainly takes perhaps a change in organisation of um, different branches of medicine and, and uh, sort of coming together in a more integrated way. The report also says people living longer with illness will have a profound effect on those caring for loved ones at home. One in eight in the population currently uh, provides informal care for um, a relative or friend and that number will increase in future. Um, that has an impact on their, their economic position, it has an impact on their employment, for, for many for employment. Um, so it has a huge effect on people. For many who have experienced hospice care, the support has been invaluable. Phyllis Betts had bereavement counselling here after recently losing her daughter. If it wasn't for this place, I'd be in a very, very black hole. They've been that much of a support to you? They have, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Really have. If you want anything, you've just got to put your hand up or just shout and they'll come to you and look after you. The majority of hospices are funded through charitable donations but receive some funding from local NHS clinical commissioning groups and the government. In a statement, the Department of Health told us clinical commissioning groups are responsible for determining the level of NHS-funded hospice care locally and for ensuring these meet the needs of their local population. We know the NHS is facing many challenges due to, amongst other things, an ageing population, and we've already committed to backing the NHS with an additional £10 billion in real terms by 2020-21. At the Nottinghamshire Hospice, their philosophy of palliative care is adding life to days. The challenge is how to maintain that goal in the face of an ageing population. Phil Brewster, ITV News, Nottingham.